Everything Great About No Time to Die is sponsored by the Curiosity Stream Nebula Bundle. I just released a companion video exclusively on Nebula, all about the Craig Bond movies, giving my final thoughts on all five movies while also going deep into what makes them different from the rest. And I won't lie to you, I talk about Snatch and also Layer Cake and Gangster Number no. 1, Long Good Friday, Archer, and some others. Check it out by clicking the link in the description and using code CINEMAWINS to sign up for Curiosity Stream. I like some of this new logo, not sure why the line is CGI, but hey, some fun flourishes at the start. And ever since ending Skyfall with the shot down the barrel, Craig Bond is an official Bond with an official opening. But no blood and a sick transition to the snow. Apparently they heard me say I like James Bond in the snow, that's, that's not fun. Madeline Swan is one year younger than me, Leah is three months older, which was all surprised to me for some reason, but seeing her feed her Tamagotchi while adorned in bright bracelets and listening to a Walkman has really helped me connect with her. Your husband killed my family. I told you, he's gone. This will hurt him more. Accurate. But also, I always had a feeling my Tamagotchi would be the death of me. That's why I let it starve to death. Flashbacks can feel like an exposition cheap, but tied to a memory with a slick transition to the present while still leaving what actually happened up to interpretation and you've won me over. Man, if there is anything that a blurry light bleeding distortion love glow has taught us, it's that something terrible is coming. And one of these jabronis is gonna die. Sorry, Mads. Obviously, it won't be Bond. Duh. Feels way more meaningful for Madeline to say I love you in her native language. Plus, like Merv says, French is pretty, you know? That's what he said, right? The thing she needs to let go of is the masked man, but at this point, is it because he saved her? Is it because Rami is such a cutie? We don't know. Fun intrigue. Five movies later and Bond is still dealing with Vesper. Even her theme kicks in here. For a franchise with often loose ties to previous films, I can't help but love that Craig Bond has an excellent narrative through line. Perfect illustration of someone temporarily not being able to hear. The sound design makes it feel like we're underwater. He can't tell whether Madeline has picked up the phone or not, and he gets shot before he even realizes guns are being fired. Also likely a bit of shock from that explosion, and his adrenaline pumping would probably distract him from the pain. But even without hearing, Bond is the quickest of quick thinkers. Also, you up. Okay, that's two sick stunts in less than two minutes. What are you trying to prove, Bondy baby? Because you're proving it. How did they know I was here? Madeline, she's a daughter of Spectre. So, I sort of hate this, but if I was gonna cut Bond any slack, it would be that he just got exploded, and the first thing anyone says to him is that Madeline was involved. I like to think he'd give her the benefit of the doubt, but he literally just got blown up at the gravesite of his first love, who betrayed him, and his new love begged him to go there. It's a series of seriously unfortunate coincidences. Wouldn't be Bond without them. There's something I need to tell you. I bet there is. You might be thinking, now? Really, Maddie? But yeah, right before getting in a car when Bond is acting all eye buggy would be a great time to tell him she's pregnant. Had to scratch the... What's this car? Is it poor focus? I kid. Classic Bond caltrops from a classic DB5. Not that it takes past experiences to make getting shot at freak you out, but yeah, this trauma checks out since Safin shot at her through the ice when she was a little girl. But also that's some impressive bulletproof glass. And I give them credit for not cutting back to the ice scene to hammer it home. Love the powerful horns in the score here. Makes the minigun reveal hit that much harder. I'll never see you again. Doubt. And we've crossed over into classic Bond now with all the styling and prestige. It even feels more worthy because we watched Craig Bond earn it for over 15 years, starting right with his first two kills to become a double O. Faces from my best return. Oof, with Vesper on that line? By the way, Billie Eilish has the voice of a goddess and should be treated as such. We spin into the fantasy title sequence and then spin back out when it's complete. Oof, that's a blip of a long time. Even though it's bad, guys, I can't help but love some elegant spy infiltration with a pretty sunset in the background. I mean, again, bad guys, but that's a pretty sick bomb. Okay, and it's even cooler than I thought. Magnets always working like that. Where's 007? Aw, not that one. Messing with our emotions, camera operator. Just rude, Felix. Throw your butts in the trash, or Craig Bond will throw your butt in the trash. Daniel Craig, 60-year-old workout routine. I'm sure he's probably done it before, but rocking an appendix carry feels less James Bond, 007 International, made of mystery and more James Bond, some guy in hiding. Buju Bantan's champion? This is a solid throwback jam. Cuba, you love it, Dan. <laughs> oh, I love it. 
So after all this time, they're finally saying Craig Bond did all the Brosnan Bond stuff? Goldeneye and Die Another Day had Bond in Cuba, and he didn't always love it. Still, old friends giving each other guff is where it's at. Love these two. He's leaving out the best part. Spectre. By the way, Bond and I agree that Logan S. will be a no good baddie. You're really the only guy for the job. <laughs> You're the guy. Adoration? But he's probably still a genuine fan. Where'd you find the Book of Mormon? Hello, whatever faith you want, but that is a devastating burn. Harder to tell the good from bad, villains from heroes these days. Bond has the most philosophical friends, and whenever they say that line, they die. So stop it. What do you die for? I'm a thing for order X. She's done her research. He has a thing for sassy ladies. It is so obvious you're a man who only has time to kill, nothing to live for. Yep, as they say, no time to be not alive. I'm not just any old double O. I'm double O seven. It's just a number. I actually would have thought he truly believed that, but maybe that was pre Vesper, pre Madeline Bond, and now that he's alone, he only has his legacy to hold on to. Oof. Mallory, what have you done? Moments like these that make MI6 seem like they might be the baddies? Crime that's been organized, if you will. Don't you think that we ought to get to know each other just a little bit before we, um... Oh, <laughs> I... No, 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 no. <laughs> Got him. Finally, someone feels how they should about him being 84. I've done three weeks training. What a perfect cast for the pretend noob agent who'll just get in the way, making the reveal that she shreds even sweeter. Two vodka martinis, shaken, not stirred. Season. I think I probably put too much thought into the martini order, but just one more time. In Casino Royale, he orders two. The first is very specific and meant to annoy, confuse, and otherwise disrupt the poker game. The second is because he wants some alcohol. I don't like I give it damn. He names the first the Vesper Martini. In Quantum, he gets smashed on Vesper Martinis while grieving her. In Skyfall, he orders his martini shaken, but it's off screen and we only see the results. Inspector, he just dittos Madeline's order. Dirty. Make that too. Now that Bond is on his final few missions, we finally get to hear his iconic order. The fact that when it's compared to his first two orders as Bond, it's much closer to the just give me alcohol order is pretty telling and also puts a sad context onto every other Bond's order. There, I've successfully spent too much time talking about this. Ugh, I take it back. Smearing off in a martini? He's just a cheap alcoholic. New favorite Bond character ever? Spectre once again coming in hot with the Fidelio vibes. We ran into each other in Italy. That was an eye-opening experience. Hey, you got, got him? I mean, that was Brosnan Bond level of corn, but he wore it well. It just really wouldn't be Bond without an evil eyeball carry around on a platter. It is a working only Spectre or dying. <laughs> he seems normal. Hello. And polite. I love seeing Marta have her moment to show off her anti-stormtrooper aim. Paloma is an absolute crusher. I love when a sexy dress meant to distract has a second purpose. In this case, unrestricted high sidekicks. Yep, jump the gun on the badass joy moment. I swear I've seen Bond kill three guys exactly like that. And I've never had a job where doing shots in the middle was a good idea. Guess that's why she's Paloma. Like Prince or Cher, only needs the one. Using those horns again in perfect moments, Paloma crashing the car and Bond walking out into the middle of a firefight like he's wearing plot armor. <laughs> She's so pleased with herself. You were excellent. You too. Next time, stay longer. I will. Not like there was enough time, but Bond just keeping it profesh with a Bond girl is actually a fun change of pace. More than anything, they seem to enjoy working together and had a genuinely good time. Oh! Nope. Don't like this at all. Felix is like one of the only likable living Craig Bond characters besides Paddington and now Paloma. Don't do this to us. One of the main things Craig Bonds have always had over the others is this visceral feeling of realism, running just a little too fast down the stairs and face planting. But I get a feeling of my gut, Ash might not be on our side. Well played, Felix. Even in death, you got a quip and pun. It's the only way. I was such a big fan of his. Not big enough, otherwise you'd know you can't kill him off screen. It's a good life, is it? The best. Oof. I think we all would have wanted a more noble death for Felix, but that's kind of the point here. These guys are just being yanked around by puppet strings, and in the end, they are disposable. Well, that'll haunt your nightmares. Dame Judy Dench's bulldog. Even when it's just a trinket, Dame Judy Dench is always a win. Name? Bond. James Bond. There he is. Such a flip of the iconic introduction since he's coming home and his own agency doesn't know who he is. He ran a Spectre meeting in Cuba from Belmarsh. It's now that you realize everything Blofeld is saying is about the party. It's clean as can be. Everyone just wants a party. Yeah, I want the boy to hear me. No. If you've nothing left to give, you are irrelevant. You've done your bit and we thank you for your service, again. I love M's growly delivery here. He's both angry at Bond for pointing out his own mistakes, but also there's almost some hurt in there where M wishes James was still around to help. Hello Q, I've missed you. Best 
friends, reunited. Need more time to organize. There have been breaches around the world of databases holding DNA information. Well, that seals it. Really regretting doing 23andMe now. Morning. Morning. New patient. He's weird. Weird? Seems totes normal to me. Talking about possessing people, stealing hair. I always love how Bond villains can be imposing without being traditionally physically imposing. Connects you to them forever. The same as taking it. They belong to you. Like the mask. Even without context, this would be such a creepy move. <laughs> that little head tilt. We managed to access a database of their targets. We? Oh, for f sake. <laughs> Perfect M response. It exemplifies his feelings about Craig Bond for every movie. I hate you and you're amazing. Oh, Bond. Oh my God, I haven't seen you in... Uh, how is your retirement? Shut up, Q. I know he's staying with you. <laughs> Bonds don't lie, face. He's been reinstated as a double O. Double O what? Double O steal your job? No, that's some good work, Naomi. Thank you, sir. Uh, double O what? Double O steal your girl? Find him, you'll find Obrichev. Um, good luck. Aw, he tries, but he's just so bad at being sincere. Control. Double O feeling some feelings? Mr. Bond. Well, that works pretty well to make James feel crappy, even though she's actually just not willing to risk his life. Double O seven. Really trying. Ish. It says something that for all she's been through, this is the thing that scares her too much. Open the door. Don't. But let that be a lesson to you. Don't go grabbing women. You might get nanobotted. Cuba was quite the party. A happy birthday, by the way. Thank you. Bunch of polite gentlemen. Politeness. Looking sharp, Bond. Paddington complimenting his buddy even when his buddy isn't there. Best friends forever. I simply have to see your face when she tells you the truth. Well, this entire Blofeld sequence, my only complaint is that I want more. And then you left her for me. Because there's something special about a baddie that just wants to watch James in pain. I didn't need to kill you. I'd already broken you. And no one smiles through evil quite like Christoph Waltz. <laughs> How brutally gangster of him. Once Heracles is in your system, it's there forever. Ah, uh, yes, the fox die of the Bondiverse. Craig Bond locations really go above and beyond on the gorgeous scale. Even without Bond in snow, I'll take it. For what felt like five minutes of my life, I wanted everything with you. You may not come to Bond for the love story, but it's here and it's making you feel stuff. Love. It's making you feel love. This is my seat. Honestly, didn't see this coming the first time. Kind of thought after Mad scratched that itch for him, it was off the table. Oh, hey, there she is again. Dame Judi Dench is always a win. I will die on that hill. Also, if someone can get me that painting, I'll, I'll be your bestie. I see she's been hitting the spice melange. I have something to show you. Another child? <laughs> always time for a joke. You just gave me a reason to kill him. Cute of him to pretend like he needs a reason. What was it? Oh, the brutal honesty of children is never not entertaining. And the, the French softens it a little. I thought she was following Logan Ash, not me. Always a fan of the, oh snap, it's about to go off moments, especially when you feel like you're a half step ahead of Bond. Nothing says bad guys like two dark SUVs traveling six inches apart. All it takes is one cheeky goon to break check and the whole enterprise falls apart. Do I like seeing children in danger? No. Does Julia usually close her eyes or leave the room during scenes like this? Yes. Does it have the intensity of a classic Bond chase scene? Obby. And see, you endanger kids, you get smushed. I don't make the rules. I love when in a scene of awesome shots, you get one shot that makes you go, holy crap. That's what this shot was. Can we, can we watch it again? Let's watch it again. I sort of feel like a raptor should pop out here, and I once again would like to voice my full support for a James Bond Jurassic Park crossover. Saving that guy who didn't trust you and abandoned you for five years. Oh, and your, your daughter. Smart way of trying to draw them away from the ladies. The calmness with which Bond takes out the Range Rover with this modified Beretta ARX 160A3 is a real reminder of what a stone cold killer he can be. You know it's gonna happen and it's still so brutal, <laughs> love it. You won't be able to stop him. So why don't you help me out, brother? I had a brother. His name was Felix Leiter. Aw, it's true, they'd been through a lot together and over a long period of time. Come up and still a fan? I mean, probably. Need our ride? Solid callback, 007B. Need our ride? Thank you, 007. Also, her glasses are sick. Permission for Commander Bond to be redesignated as 007. It's just a number. Aw, these siblings in arms. Fairly strong. What's that? We haven't had the chance to test it properly. Just be careful. That's right, it's back. James Bond and Paddington bigger. Some technology saving the world and Oh, that's so epic. I wonder what Troy keeps the marmalade sandwiches. Can I just say it? 
the fit. If you're a Bond villain, you gotta dress the part and he's crushing it. There is something so intensely creepy about Safin holding this child, beyond just him being a villain. He's obsessed over Madeline since she was a kid, so like, he's weird with kids, and this scene makes you feel that, and it's a real ew moment. Don't worry. You have me. Look, they hardcore underused Rami Malek because he had such potential to be a great villain, but he still sells every moment he's in. And this is why Bond will always be so cool. Now, just imagine if there were dinosaurs on the island. Sorry, that's the last one. All I'm saying is a Jurassic Bond would have been awesome. Seriously, the tech. A glider plane that doubles as a submarine? What a perfect final mission for this movie. Infiltrating the base, assassinating faceless goons with silencers. Very video game, very chic. Down, boy. Got him. Times two. You will never leave this island alive. Doc, spoiler alert. Sheesh. Got him times three. There is no need for violence. Beware of those who commit violence, but then tell everyone there's no need for violence. They're usually bad guys. Although I gotta give Safin credit for pageantry. Sorry. Presentation! I mean, they really pulled out all the stops visually. Safin presents himself like the Bond villain to end all Bond villains. Look at this giant concrete room with weird stones and a tree on the side with a huge table in the middle. She's light as a fence. I love that Safin had to have told his goons at some point he'd throw a pillow in the air and they had to shoot it. Or even better, it's like day one goon training. Poor Safin just walking his grounds, throwing a baseball up in the air, ducking and covering. People want oblivion. I thought I was the only one who liked oblivion. Eh, 1.3 million of you watched that video. Can't take it back. If you watched it, you liked it. That's the rule. We both eradicate people to make the world a better place. I just want to be a little tidier. Obviously, Safin is next level bonkers and his motives are hardly sound, but he does make a good point here. Especially within the Craig Bond films, there has been a real questioning of the tactics and motives of MI6 and governmental powers in general. And a good villain needs at least a little bit of truth on their side, which in the end is what works for Ozymandias. Sorry, I meant Safin. All you're really doing is standing in a very long line of angry little men. But James, when you're right, you're right. There it is, the old triple kill and a literal trap door. He's really taking this villain thing to heart. If you don't want my protection, then off you go. <laughs> she is the cutest kid ever, and I love that he gives her the option and she takes it with barely hesitation. Oh, so that's what we were standing in. I'm gonna leave. I do not need a laboratory to exterminate your entire race from the face of the earth. Do you know what time it is? What? Time to die. Come up and I don't know if the story needed to make the doc wicked racist in the last moment, but it certainly made me feel better about his death. Madeline, Mathilde, am I, uh... Wow, he can't even say it. It's like even in the moment if he admits what they are to him, he'll become too distracted. Don't you dare. Don't you dare give her your tecta sweater as a memento she'll keep forever from her father. Love for the last time. Oof. Can't complain that our guy gets one more fantastic action set piece, sneaking around, doing cool stuff in silhouette, killing fools to this upbeat piece of music. Oh snap, a true shot down the barrel. And here are the horns coming back. Hans Zimmer helped make Craig Bond one of the greats. Also, this dang long take starts after Bond gets blown up the first time. He kills a whole bunch of guys on the stairs, uses a guy's shatter to find him and kill him, uses one as a shield, kills these guys who thought they might sneak up on him, all leading to a final showdown with the main heavy in this movie. I love Bond's reaction. He really had no idea what was going to happen. I just show someone your watch. Really blew their mind. There we go. That quip plus a little music cue. Checking off all the Bond boxes before old Blue Eyes pieces out. So listen very carefully, 007. They don't call him Bond James Bond for nothing, Paddington. Ooh, that's brutal. This was your choice. It's such a brutal thing to say to Bond, especially since it's true about so much of his life. Safin staring smugly at Bond as he's about to die is about as close as we're gonna get to the Craig Bond Waltzfeld face off many of us wanted. And I'll be honest, it's pretty amazing. Bond doesn't even look at him, he's so broken. Safin won. Even with his big evil plan getting stopped, he still won. He made Bond as miserable as he is, so he has no reason to keep living. As someone who never wants any good guys to die, they've sold it pretty well here. He's been shot multiple times. There isn't enough time to get off the island anyway, but obviously, most importantly, he's a walking WMD to the people he cares about. You know as well as I do that you can't. It's, it's permanent. We just need more time. If we only had more time. You have all the time in the world. What a line. 
It's no time for Madeline and Mathilde to die. Just bond. She does have your eyes. I know. Not since Han Solo's has an I know been so heartbreakingly brutal. What an image. He just stands there with his daughter's stuff he tucked in his suspenders and welcomes it. I'm not sure you can get much more badass than that. Bad ass good guy. I'm gonna be honest, I was keeping it together until I saw Q getting watery eyed. But this music? And what a piece of music to send him off to. When Final Ascent began, it gave me adagio and D minor feels, but it really takes on its own emotional movement. The function of man is to live, not to exist. I shall not waste my days trying to prolong them. I shall use my time. That quote is apparently from an obituary for Bond in one of the original Ian Fleming novels. Just took Ray Fiennes putting the most gravitas available to really bring it home. I'm going to tell you a story about a man. His name was Bond. Love it. No fake out, no... Maybe he's alive! He lives on in people's memories and in his child. That's it, because that's life. Oh, never mind. JK, JK, I'm sure the next Bond won't upset anyone ever at all, ever. In any way, ever. The time has come for us to not have any time for dying. Unless you're Bond James Bond, in which case we will in fact have just enough time to die. What a journey we've taken with Craig Bond. Let's get through some of the critical stuff. I'll be honest, on first watch this wasn't my favorite, it's pretty long and that James Bond dies. And you know how I feel about our protagonist dying, it's also really hard to watch Bond abandon Madeline so quickly. He was burnt by Vesper, sure, but he makes a brash decision that he didn't need to make. Also Blofeld is needlessly killed after giving one of the more interesting performances of the movie, and Safin just isn't important enough to Bond's story to be really impactful. But watching it a second time was an entirely different experience. Taking away the expectations and wondering what's going to happen made this a totally new Bond film. Going in knowing that and how he'd die made it more enjoyable for me. And I think this might actually be a key piece to watching Bond movies and perhaps might be part of the reason why they've held on so long. There's only so many spoiler moments in Bond films. Oh, she's money penny? Cool. Oh nice, that's the new Q. Wonder if he's Blofeld. And yes, he is. The shock factor is almost non-existent, and once you take that away, you're left with some amazing set pieces and Bond being Bond. I have more to say about Daniel Craig's Bond specifically in my Nebula video, so check that out. Nomi is a fun new addition. They didn't do a whole lot with her character, but for the time she has, she's great. And I love that they don't make her some invincible super spy beyond Bond's skill. She, like him, is human, and she, like him, is petty at times. She's annoyed by Bond, but also respects the skills, and Lashana Lynch fits right in. While Safin isn't perfect for the story, Rami Malek is a solid Bond villain. His final moment is pretty incredible, and he gets to take home the medal. He truly bested James Bond. And that last stare into Bond's eyes as Bond is about to kill him is about as baller as it gets. He wins. He sees it on Bond's face. He dies happy. Christoph Waltz is always great, but I really loved his few moments of Blofeld here. This one scene between him and Bond makes me wish we had another Craig Bond Waltzfeld movie. They have great chemistry, especially when they are both so close to the edge. Lea Seydoux definitely brought her A-game to the Madeline role this time around. You buy that she's conflicted, you buy that she's a mom, you buy that she's devastated when Bond bails, comes back, and then dies. Being James Bond, love interest is many times a thankless role, but she brought real depth and emotion to it. And there was Craig Bond, Mr. Blue Eyes. No one wanted him, but I think we won most everyone over. Maybe Bond shouldn't be blonde, but that's dumb and he obviously can be. Craig got one of the most complete Bond stories, so questioning him now would be silly. And I've loved every version of him throughout all the movies. I really don't know what's next for the character of James Bond. I appreciate that Craig, as well as Dame Judi Dench and Rafe Fiennes, ushered in an era where Bond movies were taken so seriously that people actually focused on plot holes or hard-to-believe moments when in the past that's essentially what Bond was. At the end of the day, I think Daniel Craig can look back at his tenure as Bond and be proud. It's a legacy that's got to be hard to agree to join, and he nailed it. But is he a spy, or is he actually a gangster enforcer? You'll have to check out my full-length Nebula Companion video where I make the case why Craig Bond is completely different from every other version of Bond. I also wrap up my thoughts on his entire pentology, and it's just too much for this video, so sign up for the Curiosity Stream Nebula bundle, which is 42% off right now, to watch it. This is a new thing I'm trying out. Last month was all about the Spider's Men, and I'm going to keep building a catalog of retrospective videos on different franchises. All exclusively on Nebula, our creator-built streaming service that has all my YouTube videos with no ads ever, no sponsor reads like this one and videos are always dropped a little early there, plus all my original videos too hot for YouTube. And it's all made possible by the Curiosity Stream Nebula bundle, which has a crazy 42% off sale going on for Father's Day from today through 621.22, which makes an annual plan $11.59, that's less than a dollar a month. While you're on Curiosity Stream, check out Sushi the Global Catch, a meticulously researched film that traces the origins of sushi in Japan to its status today as a cuisine that has spawned a lucrative worldwide industry and what that might mean for the extinction of the bluefin tuna. It's a beautiful and thoughtful doc. So click the link in the description, curiositystream.com slash cinemawins and sign up using code cinemawins. Once you sign up for Curiosity Stream, you'll get an email on how to set up your Nebula account. And it's not a trial, you'll have Nebula as long as you're a Curiosity Stream member. 
It's a huge help to the channel and to me since Nebula is something I believe in and want to continue to succeed. It's a great way for us to try out new content like my Spider-Man video and the Craig Bond is a gangster video that would definitely get demonetized. So click the link on screen, sign up and save 42% less than $1 per month, nutso deal, and you'll get all that in Curiosity Stream and Nebula. Thanks. You know, they come with fur these days.